subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Just about a hundred years ago, the 1918 influenza pandemic, commonly known as the Spanish flu, occurred. It lasted from the spring of 1918 to the summer of 1919 and infected over 500 million people. This was then one third of the world's population. It was also the deadliest pandemic in history. It's estimated to have killed anywhere from 20 million to 100 million people. The outbreak occurred just after and during the end of the First World War and to keep the morale up, countries that had been at war like the US, UK, France, Germany underreported and minimized their numbers through wartime censorship. But the media were free to report about Spain, which had been neutral in the war, and this created the impression that the disaster hit Spain disproportionately and particularly hard, and thus the name Spanish flu. In India, the disease killed an estimated 12 to 13 million people. It didn't affect the British or the privileged much as they lived in large homes with ample space, but among the rest of the Indian population, there was a widespread devastation. Because of shortage of wood for cremation, rivers and drains were filled with bodies. The next year saw a reduction in births by up to 30% and the resentment against the British during the pandemic is thought to have played a crucial role in stirring up anti-colonial sentiment after the First World War. The flu was also respiratory and spread exactly in the same manner as the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The biggest contributing factor to it becoming a pandemic was also worldwide travel in modern transportation, especially of army troops. Through the months of April and May of 1918, it primarily spread rapidly in Europe, in UK, France, Spain and Italy. Its mortality was roughly similar to the seasonal flu and the outbreak was relatively mild. Numbers dropped through the summer, but towards late August in the same year, a more virulent strain emerged in Europe. Now, influenza viruses, unlike coronaviruses, are more prone to mutating into lesser or more virulent strains. The current one is mutating to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but without any change in virulence. The mutated strain in 1918 spread like wildfire and wiped out millions. It was suddenly able to infect young people, such as those who served in the war, and kill them within just 24 hours. The death rate skyrocketed in just two months. The mechanism behind this was the cytokine storm, which is when the body's immune system overreacts and kills healthy cells and organs along with the virus. It attacked even young adults and the healthy. There were then two more subsequent waves, but they were not as deadly as the second wave. But despite its increased virulence, the rapid spread of the disease was primarily because of lack of public health intervention and the unwillingness of authorities to impose quarantine measures during wartime. They did not want to take resources away from the war and manufacturing. Additionally, hundreds and thousands of healthcare workers were also deployed to military camps, leading to severe shortages in hospitals for civilians. There are plenty of lessons to be learned from case studies of public health interventions in American cities. In Philadelphia, for example, just 10 days after the first case appeared, there was a parade that was attended by over 200,000 people. The city ended up seeing the highest death toll in the entire country. By contrast, the city of St. Louis, which shut down all public places and started quarantining within just two days of the first case, managed to flatten their curve relatively well. When they lifted their restrictions early in two weeks, the city immediately saw a burst of new cases and then it quickly clamped down again. In San Francisco, an anti-mask league was formed after the mandatory masking ordinance in public. Much like in America today, there was a lot of public resentment against the government for imposing mandatory physical distancing and masking measures. The government gave in to the public pressure and eventually lifted these measures. Immediately, case numbers climbed dangerously and San Francisco saw double the number of deaths that it had before. Many studies have analyzed the public health response and effects of physical distancing measures from the Spanish flu. The takeaways are clear. Easing lockdowns and restrictions too early can be deadly, and the only way to buy enough time to flatten the curve and get vaccines ready is continuous and persistent physical distancing. This is Sandhya Ramesh from Bengaluru for The Print.